Good evening. This is The Chase, Zimbabwe's premier current affairs program. Hello, I'm Andy Hodges. Six days to go before Zimbabwe holds its national harmonized election. Yes, you heard me right. Only six days. Zimbabwean citizens eligible to vote will, in their numbers, in their millions, troop to polling stations across the country to participate in the democratic process. All seems set and ready to go. Foreign election monitoring teams and observers have landed in the country. Zimbabwe Electoral Commission says that all is in place. Ballots are printed, polling stations and logistics ready. It is apparently all systems go. Let's review some of the important numbers as we head into next week's election. Well, 6.6 .6 million, just over 6.6 .6 million registered voters, 12,374 polling stations, 518 National Assembly and 64 independent candidates, 4,648 local authority candidates and 266 independents, 91 local authority wards already won by the ruling party ZANU-PF uncontested, 150,000 electoral officers deployed by ZEC. And finally, 11 candidates are on the ballot competing for the presidential seat, which requires an outright winner, 50 plus one of the vote. If this is not achieved in the first round, the top two candidates brace for a runoff. Six weeks later, on the 2nd of October. All political parties do have their core supporters, those who will vote for them come hell or high water. But what about the undecided voter? Some election observers estimate that these voters could constitute a substantial percentage of the voting electorate, a percentage that may have an impact on the fortunes of some candidates. So that the representatives of Zimbabwean political parties are not only talking to their core supporters, but also trying to convince undecided voters to vote for them. So what do political parties offer you to convince you to vote for them? What messaging, policies, and promises from candidates and parties will resonate with you, the voter? Our discussion, August the 23rd, the final lap. Join me and my guest tonight live on The Chase. Welcome back. You're watching The Chase, Zimbabwe's premier current affairs program. This is Etienne Prime broadcasting you from our studios in Harare, Zimbabwe. To discuss August the 23rd, the final lap, I'm joined in the studio by Farai Marapira, ZANU-PF Acting Director of Information, Gwinyai Muzarewa, UANC, in fact, he's a presidential candidate for UANC, Garakai Mulambo, UZA National Chairperson. As you'll notice, we had invited Gift Ostalo Ziba, he's Triple C Deputy Spokesperson. He did say he was on his way. We're anticipating that he will be here, but to emphasize that he would, he should be joining us shortly. Shortly, he was just out of town. Gentlemen, good evening and welcome to The Chase. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much. Good evening. Now, to my guest, I will allow you to interject within reason, but remember that here at ZTN Prime, our values are dignity, dialogue, and debate. Now, all views expressed on The Chase are those of our guests and do not reflect the views of Zim Papers 1980 Limited or indeed of ZTN Prime. Now, to our viewers watching ZTN Prime, please join this discussion via our social media platforms, our Facebook page, Zim Papers TV Network, and X, formerly Twitter, our handle there, at ZTM Prime. We would like to hear from you. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask you all the same question, and I'll start with you, Grinyai. Um, let's assess the playing field in terms of campaigns and access to voters in all 10 provinces. Have, have, have your party faced any hurdles in getting your message across to voters? Has your party been, in your view, in any way restricted from campaigning effectively or not? We have not been disturbed by anybody when we uh, assemble. Uh, a couple of times the, the police kind of messed up because even though we had a notification letter, they listened to some people who, who told them that uh, it was no time for campaign yet. These people were not officials and the police bent over to that. Mm. That was a little bit disturbing. But I told my people, not to not to uh, to fight about that, mm. uh, because when when people see that you are a winner, they try by all means to uh, to knock you down. But if you are a winner, you never be knocked down by anybody. So we are very strong, and uh, we have not been disturbed, and we try to we try by all means to to keep the law. Mm. Okay. We stay with the law. 
All right, I'd like to now welcome Gift Ostalos Ziba. He's Triple C Deputy uh, Spokesperson. Ostalos, welcome to the chamber. Thank you very much. All right, let me, let me come to you, Gary Kai. The similar question. Have you had any issues in terms of out there in the 10 provinces being able to access your voters? Is there anything, any hurdles being put in your way that your messaging has been constrained? You haven't been able to campaign effectively? Uh, thank you very much, Andy. Thank you for the question. Um, I can safely say when we started United Zimbabwe Alliance in May 2021, we have never had so many challenges in terms of our notification for meetings that were taking place. Until when uh, we actually making some inroads. That's when we started writing to the police, notifying them of our intended uh, pending meetings and uh, even uh, refuse collection in some areas. And then they will deny us, uh, stating, stating that they do not have uh, enough force to uh, enforce it, uh, while at least we are doing our uh, security concerns. Yes, so uh, I can safely say that has actually affected us. And also going further to say, our president and the party, they have been affected deeply by uh, almost 30 days after the nomination day, because we have to go through the court for our president to be admitted on the ballot. Uh, which, again, to us was quite unfair. That actually affected greatly our campaign and uh, our movement uh, for this particular election. So you believe that did stifle your messaging and your, and your access to voters to send your message across? Certainly, yes, because the moment that you are trying to send a message, already you are disadvantaged. Some people have got over 30 days of maximum campaigning and are utilizing that period. But for us, it was never the same. Because, okay. number one, you are disadvantaged because you are now following where people were disgruntled, and now you need to remind them that, you know what, we are still on the ballot paper. Uh, mm. Just yesterday, I uh, we went in Blawayo, and people are like, we heard that Madam President is not on the ballot paper. So what are you doing? Why are you campaigning? Okay. It's okay. simply because Zek has failed to notify, uh, to, to publish the um, statutory instrument, or rather the Gazette, to Gazette that Elizabeth Valero is supposed to be on the ballot paper as per the court directive. Mm. So again, she, I can simply say it stifles our campaign. Okay. Yes, but the court has actually directed that. Mm. So to right. me... It yep. is Stifford uh, Arakan. Farai, you may, you may obviously Zanupia be the ruling party, the one currently in government. However, right now, you're a political party. How are you finding access? We need to look at every party the same. Are you, did you find any hurdles? I know that we looked at the numbers and the police seem to signify that Zanupia rallies were cancelled. What, what was your impression in terms of getting your messaging out to the electorate? Yes, definitely we've had um, some interactions we've wanted to do, which have been uh, stopped by the police. But uh, with us, it's simply a matter of understanding that uh, they'll be working within their purvey as, a, as an organization. It is within their rights to allow or disallow, uh, depending on uh, certain factors which are guide, um, uh, which, is, uh, which is under MOPA. So as an UPF, we, I think we are the party with the most uh, restricted uh, uh, rallies. But we understand that uh, the police will be working within the context of their work. And uh, we will not waste time. Uh, uh, complaining about uh, people who are working within the confines of the electoral laws. So, yeah, that's our standpoint as an UPF. And uh, we, saw, we, we respect the law, we respect legality. It doesn't have to be in our favor. It doesn't have to always be in our favor. We accept that when the law is against us, it is still the law. But the law has got no sides. Mm -hmm. The law is the law. Mm -hmm. Ostalos, Triple C, uh, uh, your, your campaigning, your ability to reach your voters, to get your message across, have you had any major hurdles or any issues in terms of the campaigning and getting out there to all the, in the 10 provinces? Of course, um, we have had a lot of challenges, particularly um, in the countryside, uh, because there are certain provinces in this country um, where uh, the alternative voice is not allowed, particularly in the Mashonaland part and the broader part uh, of the countryside. And this is a pattern that has been happening in the pre-election, during the election environment, because um, of obviously the mystery that a certain political party is dominant in the countryside. Just today, we had a rally which was supposed to be happening in Bire. Roads were barricaded. Zanu PF people wearing Zanu PF regalia, man illegal roadblocks, um, making it impossible for us to proceed to our rallies, even if these rallies were cleared by the police, and that fundamental problem is born out of the conflation between uh, the police, uh, the state, and of course, political parties. And because of that conflation, that's why you see, uh, you know, all these uh, rallies of us being affected. But nonetheless, we have mm. to continue because we understand that authoritarian conditions are never favorable to alternative voices. That's why you see us proceeding and finding alternative ways to reach out to our people to spread the message of change. 
and to make sure that we converse with the people in the country. Right. You, you heard the accusation there, apparently, today's today, Zani PF barricading the road, stopping the opposition. Is, a, is, is this anything that you've heard a, in terms of your a, countries? It is a tired song um, from the opposition that uh, every time they have a failure, it is always Zani PF's fault. We are not the ZRP. We are not ZEC. Let me make it clear from the onset. If they have a problem with uh, barricaded roads, it is the ro duty of the police to remove those people if indeed it happened. We have been very clear, ZANU-PF, that the police must execute their mandate to the full extent of the law. So if there is any problem of such a nature, then the police should attend. And if they are having problems with the police, they should not include ZANU-PF in it. We have nothing to do with any of this. Okay, I, and I want to direct this question to Grinyai and Gary Kai. Um, let me start with you, Grinyai. Election analysts have concluded that the main contest in the harmonized election will be between the ruling parties, the NEPF, and what some would call arguably the largest opposition party in Zimbabwe, Triple C. They state that there is no chance at all that any party outside those two will either win the presidency or make any significant, if any, inroads in the parliamentary and local authority polls. What's your comment to that? That's that's a very sad assumption. Um, I can tell you right now that the UANC is going to surprise you all because we don't gather in large numbers. We don't have to show off anything, but our work from the past tell the people that we are the kind of party that, that does what it promises. So a lot of people are quiet, but they know that on the 23rd of December, they're going to be happy to, to put an X where it belongs. In right? August, I hope. Yeah. Probably not going to wait until December. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary Kai, how about you? I mean, no chance to win. You don't have a hope to get either win the presidency or win. And in fact, the main battle is between the opposition, mm -hmm. Triple C, and the ruling parties, and the I like it when you are getting into a competition, uh, in special of this magnitude, and people are underestimating your potential. We're really happy, we're really excited that people out there have known us for what we stand for. And as United Zimbabwe Alliance, we are the alternate government. We are not fighting for an opposition space, but we are fighting for being the next government on Zimbabwe, to liberate the Zimbabwe for the Zimbabweans and economical emancipation for our country and for our people. Mm. So the people, they have accepted our message that we, the United Zimbabwe Alliance, are the party that, are, that is going to unite the people of Zimbabwe. People have been torn apart between ZANU-PF, MDC, and its formations. Uh, I can tell you that, uh, yes, it's been a, t a, retired, uh, a tired run, so to say, because we are the alternative and we are the best to go with. People have accepted our message and people are actually united, not divided by the politics of the past. Well, Stalos and Gift, uh, uh, Stalos and Farai, apologies. Zanu PF projecting 5 million votes. Um, that was what your party has been telling us here on the chase. Triple C, possibly 3 to 5 million as well. That seems to also imply that both your parties are looking at it as I can call it the two horse race between each other. Let me start with you, Ostalos. Do you believe that the, 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 the battle for the electoral to win the election is between Triple C and Zani Pef? Do you see any competition in terms of other political parties standing in the electoral that could possibly upset the apple cart, so to speak? Look, uh, politics by its very nature is a game of numbers, and numbers don't lie, and uh, the data that is existing qualitatively and quantitatively reflects that uh, what the major political players in this country, and that does not undermine other political organization because they've got the constitutional duty and the constitutional right to be, uh, you know, to um, request to be, you know, led uh, in different uh, parts, whether in parliament or in mm. government. But look, existing data shows beyond any doubt, you know, if you look at the number of uh, members of parliament filtered by political parties by its own self, if you go to ZEC and know which parties have 210 members of parliament, which parties have, uh, you know, a majority of councillors. So that tells the story of who is who in the politics of this country. But nonetheless, our respectful view, that's why we've raised concerns about people being disqualified. We sent our sympathy to their candidate um, uh, Madam Valerio, when they're removed from the ballot, the same applies to people like Kasukwere. We believe that even if people are slated for, you know, a loss electorally, so they have the right to be on the ballot. Mm. 
you know, being a dominant political organization must not stop uh, the sprouting of other political organizations and movements, because that's the beauty of democracy. Democracy is about making sure that people have got the choice, even if they are major political players. For example, the PF has exhibited extreme confidence. You said five million people. You said that you're fighting yourselves, basically. Um, there's only one candidate. But truly, it, it does look as if all analysts do predict that this is a two-horse race, if I can call it that, between Zani PF and Triple C. What, what are your views, uh, Zani PF? Well, we have revised from 5 million votes to 6 million. Okay, <laughs> so you're yes, taking the whole, yes. all the votes? <laughs> you want all of them. Okay. Now, when uh, our ideology as an UPF is um, when we're working towards votes, we do not look at other players. We look at the deliverables that are needed by the people that will make people vote for an UPF. And this is why an UPF, since its inception, is a long lever and is a powerful force to reckon with. This is why you've seen, um, under the leadership of President Mnangagwa, we have instituted uh, radical uh, maneuvers within the economy in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, uh, climate, uh, climatic uh, control measures, in, uh, roads, uh, the airports, you know, all sectors manufacturing from 28% uh, in the shelves to 75% uh, locally produced today. These are the things that uh, the people of Zimbabwe are looking at. They are not looking at insults, divisiveness, or fights. They want to deal with bread and butter issues. They want to deal with matters of where the country will be headed. So this is the answer that this is the answer that we're giving them. We are dualizing roads. We are building. A, we have the biggest uh, border post now, which is Bybridge. Mm -hmm. You look at the Robert Gabriel Mugabe uh, Airport. You look at Wange Unit Seven and Eight. You look at. Uh, all these factors, Gwai Shangani Dam, you know, Matt North as an example has got Gwai Shangani as a... Uh, so, so let me finish, me, let me, sorry, yes, let me finish please. as the highlight, but uh, we are expanding and uh, constructing a, a total of six dams in Matabelele North alone. So these are the things on which right. we are riding to be voted into, back into power under President Mnangagwa. Sir, you have a comment? I have a comment. What good is it for these quote-unquote major parties. What good is it that they are doing this, they are showing off their sizes, but the country is suffering. We are in here, the, the small minority parties are in this because these big guys have failed to deliver. People are suffering, yet there are big people out there. Some of, be, some of the opposition has been there for 20 years. Nothing has happened. Some of them have been in, uh, in, in government for 43 years. People are still suffering. So let the other, let us get in and help you guys make this country better. Don't, don't, don't ride on size because the size isn't everything. There's a saying that says um, small is beautiful. And I, I can say also small it can be more effective. This year is a year to remember. There's going to be parties that you don't expect to rise to be the ones in government. They, we are going to be in government. I'd, I'd like to now ask, the, particularly the opposition, um, the opposition here, because I'll, I'll take it as the only purpose of the ruling party. Ostalis, let me start with you. Douglas Monzoa, leader of the NGCT, of course, he's come out urging opposition parties to effectively boycott the election, citing rigging and what he termed irregularities. What is your reaction as people see to the call by Monzoa? as opposition parties looking at boycotting the election? Look, uh, my biggest question is that who's that guy? What, what local stand I in political uh, uh, moral standpoint to make any such calls? Um, mm -hmm. We have made ourselves very clear uh, that uh, we believe in peaceful transfer of power and democratic change of government. That is what defines us and is born out of our ideological disposition. Uh, so we are very clear as an alternative our, in our path to part, uh, how we want to intend to occupy government is through peaceful transfer of power mm. and occupying government in that particular way and method. That does not mean that uh, we are not cognizant and conscious of the challenges that are associated with electoral processes and electoral path uh, to power. But let me also hasten to uh, educate my two brothers with greatest respect uh, 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 my brother, so that they have, they have an understanding um, about the politics in our country and what politics is all about. For us, yes, we ought to respect uh, small political organization, but you know that even the liberation of this country two decades, uh, any struggle is not defined by a period of five years. 
you know, any struggle can take 20, 30 years. Go and start the liberation of different African countries. And I'm sure belonging to the liberation generation, he understands that. We wanted Smith to be going out of this country in 1965 after the later declaration of independence. But it didn't happen. People started fighting at the end Douglas mm. Smith regime from then and before then up to 1989. That's when we had the lifting of the Union Jack. That is, is the struggle. It doesn't take as much mm. as you would want. Who would have wanted to have democracy in 1999? Mm. But it happens. That's what happens. There are some challenges. And at the same time, to quickly assist my brother there uh, so that mm. we don't just... become ahistoric uh, with facts. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we understand that as I'm speaking to you right now, majority of civil servants are getting a salary below the poverty level, including you, my, your, yourself, my brother, and everyone working here. <laughs> this, the change that people deserve in this country is not about... All right, I think, I think, we, I, I think let, let me jump in there. I, 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 I hear your point. But don't worry, we, we, okay. we, we, you'll be able to cover some of these issues later on in the program. But I, I want to just quickly get back into this. Let, let me, Gary, Gary let, me, let me talk about you then. Obviously, I mean, you yourself just said 30 days. You felt that you were disadvantaged. Valerio, yes, yes, Elizabeth Valerio, and the calls by Douglas Monzoa for opposition parties to boycott the election. What is your comment? Well, um, I believe it is with, it within his prerogative right to boycott the election, basically for his own reasons. Uh, of course, he may have valid reasons, but I think it's too late. Like, he had 21 days to do so, according mm. to the Electoral Act, to uh, boycott the election. But now, sure. he goes there to the nomination court with all the, uh, 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 the flows with, within it, and then in, in, on the twilight, he's simply saying we are withdrawing. And again, let me come to my brother Ostalus. Uh, I, I, I like the fact that you've confirmed that you guys could have taken power in 1999. Do you know, it came at a time, at, at an opportune time, where Zimbabweans were tired of one party state and there was no strong opposition. And there was ZANU-PF and uh, other opposition parties. Thank you for, for reminding the Zimbabweans. This time around, Zimbabwe are tired for two horses. They want the third way. And the third way is United Zimbabwe Alliance. The opposition has managed to annihilate, to, uh, to, to disenfranchise the, the electorate. And they are actually making people fight simply because they think mm. if we are Triple C, we are better. If we are ZANU PF, we are better. And we are coming with a different ideology and saying no. it is the citizen mantra. We have to go for the people and what the people want. So they have been there in 20 years. Yes, there are perennial oppositions. And we are not fighting for your space, my brother. We are fighting to be the government right. for the be people okay. of I mean, Zimbabwe. Right. Let, Our let's, ideology is Gary, Gary, let me jump in. <laughs> 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 I did want to ask you. I, I didn't realize that you had my pay slip. <laughs> and you knew how much I earned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a spokesperson of the biggest alternative voice organization in this country. And we intend to govern. So we are conscious about the civil service bill. We are conscious about the economic realities that you are facing. We are conscious about the realities that are faced by Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. I'm not well, so I'm not sure civil servants, am I? I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm uh, a private uh, citizen. I, I'm, I work I'm, for I'm a not couple. so sure how... Uh, uh, my brother saying that there is need to well, find an alternative. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to check to make sure that my pay slip hasn't, hasn't been leaked to Triple Z <laughs> to understand what's going on. Um, uh, you know, uh, good night. Let, let's talk about this then. You, you heard my question, the calls by Douglas Monzoa, boycott the election. Um, you know, there's only six yeah, days to yeah. go. What are your views about that? First of all, I have to say I respect uh, Douglas Monzora. He's one of those who wrote the constitution we have. For him to do something that is unconstitutional, it's, 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 it's a mystery to me. However, having said that, let me say that no political leader has any right to tell others what to do. Mm. If he decides to withdraw, that is call. The UNC is not going to withdraw. We are in it to win. Okay. For I. Should opposition political parties be concerned that Zanu PF will rig the election or not? In Zanu PF's view, will the election be free and fair? It's impossible for ZANU-PF to rig this election or any election because first and foremost, we are not running this election. We are a player, not a referee. Um, the referee of this uh, race is ZEC. Uh, ZEC is an independent body, an independent uh, body which is handling and dealing with these elections. Um, the constitution which governs uh, the creation of uh, ZEC was done in 2013 with the participation of all major parties at the time, which have morphed into different names and different structures, but essentially still the same parties. So for anyone to accuse ZANU-PF of, of rigging or anything along those lines, it's 
It's something that's not really based on reality. It's politicking and uh, banter at the well, most. Let's respond. Uh, do you believe as people see that there's an opportunity or there's a gap there somewhere for for an op for for the ruling party to possibly rig the election or to of have course, the free and fair, as some people may call? Without doubt, you know, maybe we can debunk what rigging is about. When you unleash terror on an armed civilian, say, that is part of rigging, that is part of manipulation. When you temper uh, with electoral processes, I'm sure that my brother maybe he doesn't understand what has been professed by his leader because the ZANU PF uh, presidential candidate is on record saying, We are the judiciary, we are the police, we are everything, we are the army, and that is on record uh, being said by Mr. Mnangagwa. And maybe he doesn't know or he doesn't speak on his behalf or doesn't understand mm. the party that he belongs to. Right. Um, I would like to correct uh, my brother on that matter. When uh, uh, we speak of ZANU-PF, we speak of the new dispensation, I don't think he sits here and speaks on behalf of uh, uh, the MDCT under Morgan Shangirai. He needs to learn to differentiate different eras and different uh, developments in ideology. You know, it is called growth, in other words. Um, if we are to look at recent memory, it is his leader who was on an interview with... Uh, HSTV, and you are saying that we will not accept any electoral decision, which is not a victory, because uh, if we do that, then us and our supporters are going to uh, declare ourselves winners or something to that effect. But essentially, uh, I, 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 I'm not quoting him word for word, but that is the gist of his message. So yeah, their, their, leader, their leader, their leader, their I leader, their leader in word. recent memory. We are not talking of speeches made 10 years ago. In recent memory, within the last 14 days, within this electoral period, he has been threatening the outcome of the election, stating that he cannot accept any electoral decision, so which is not a victory for him. Let, let me give you a brief moment mm. to respond, then I'll move. So, I under, to so who, is, who is threatening to undermine okay. the so law? Who is disrespecting the law? That's, that's my question. I, I, I wanted to know, since I've quoted the words in verbatim, is he saying there is regret on the part of ZANU-PF about that statement? ZANU-PF is a in the... Of the state, the military, the uh, he judiciary, asked, he and asked the He asked me a question. Right, he asked me, me... No, he asked me a question. I must... I have got the right of answer. What I am simply saying is, ZANU-PF in 2018, under the leadership of President Idim Nangagwa, became a new creature. We have opened up democratic space. That is why we, are, we have opened up the media even. That is why we are here today sitting. Because this media house is because of the electoral reforms of President Mnangagwa. So when we speak, we speak of what is currently occurring, which is why I spoke of what his leader said within the past 14 days. I just have to, I'm sorry, therefore I need to end up. Gary because that Kai, is the current nature of the opposition right yeah, now. I, I'd like to bring in my other guest. Mm. Gary Kai, as you said, A, you are currently in your 10 day road rally, I understand you call it. Of course, it. yes, we are. Your view, I suppose, what are your chances? What is your feedback received from voters? Do you have a specific number of votes that you are targeting? Uh, let me uh, start by answering his question when you are referring to a new dispensation. In, in actual fact, I think we cannot talk of a new dispensation when the people have been together for 40 years and suddenly we are saying we are a new dispensation. It's a perpetuation of the same and the same suffering that we've been here experiencing is the same that we have right now. And I can safely say, Zimbabwe, please be reminded, as United Zimbabwe Alliance, we are simply saying, we are intended, we are there for the people, and we want the people to have a successful life, to have hope. And right now in Mashingo, the people have accepted and received the message of hope. I have never expected the magnitude of mm. The, mm. Uh, the, the receptive that we have in Mashingo. Before you answer the, the question about how many votes you're targeting, for just very briefly, a quick, yes. a quick um, response, please. I need to uh, correct my brother on that. My brother, what you personally view as transition or lack of transition in ZANU-PF does not matter. I cannot judge my brother Ostalo sitting right here because he's been in a longer uh, existing uh, game of politics for statements he might have made under the tutelage of Morgan Shangirai. Because now they are under a new leadership, a party takes the complexion of its leader. ZANU-PF yeah. is in the new dispensation. We have taken the complexion of our leader and any other uh, try, attempt at connecting us, we are connected to our history. We are connected to our successes. We are connected to our mistakes. But more right, than I, that, I need to, we I are need connected. To, let, let, we are connected let, 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 to the I new... Need, yes, please, but, but please, 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 I need to move on. I need to, to the new character that we have as a party. As, as, as he's actually outlining right now, 
if there is any change in cabinet, 90% of the people who are in cabinet right now have been within the cabinet of the predecessor. So we are actually saying it's the same that is <clears throat> prepared to change. It's the same government that has been with us since 1980. Okay. Mr. Mnangagwa has been with us since 1980. He's been in part of the government and he's still in the government. So to answer your question, how many votes we are expecting? We are expecting 5 million votes uh, for us this election season. Five million. Yes, you are shocked. We are expecting <laughs> 5 million All right. votes. Uh, Gunya, you yourself have publicly stated your, par your party is targeting 3.6 million votes. It may even be higher now come the 23rd of August. Commentators have stated that your companion on the ground may not support such confidence. Are you actually holding rallies countrywide? And briefly, can you explain what you mean by the motto we mundore strategy, where you recruit people <laughs> incognito? I, con yeah. I congratulate so I say, I that right? you. Pretty good. Yeah, Thank pretty you very good. much. Uh, motto we mundore means that uh, we talk to people door to door and so forth and let them see, understand our, 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 what we are going to offer them and so on. They understand this, but they are afraid to come out right. Because I got some, some friends, for example, who are war vets, who told me outright that, listen, we can never uh, publicly tell people that we now support the UAS because we've been in trouble. So because of that fear, we respect that, and so we just let people work, accept our party. That's why I say that... Um, uh, on the day of the ballot, you're going to see a mystery, a mystery that you've never seen before. And, and, and so then you say, oh, Mr. Rowe is speaking the truth. I'm expecting not, not 6 million, not 5 million, but 3.6 million. Mark my words. Okay, for Ryan Gift, both of your parties, NPF, of course, and Triple C, contend that your rallies have been oversubscribed and attended in large numbers by your supporters. Mm -hmm. And let me start with you, Farai. Your party, NPF, yes. has been accused of bussing in supporters from all around the country to boost your numbers at your rallies. Truth or lie? Well, we have been bussing our supporters. We are holding pro provincial star rallies, and this is in 2023. Are you expecting us holding a provincial rally to have everyone walking from where they are in this time of modernity? Why should we punish our supporters? If we've got the capacity to move our supporters, the easiest way for them, we do so. It defies logic that someone finds that they, they, they try to find a political point on such a, a non-existing uh, angle. It is within our rights to move off our supporters the best way we can. Okay. Look okay. at any province and look at uh, the distance to the venue from any point within that province as the crow flies. Then you ask yourself, is there logic behind anyone criticizing us using any means of transport we can to bring our supporters mm. to the venues? Well, so, so just, let me ask you, I mean, we talked about the rallies and numbers of supporters, numbers of voters attending Triple C rallies. Why is your party confident that the numbers you state that attend the rallies will translate on polling day to votes for Triple C? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we started a mass mobilization program whose intention and objective was deliberately uh, targeting to turning our qualitative majority in uh, rallies and political party programs into a quantitative electoral dividend. If you look at the major song that we sang since the formative stages of the new movement was about making sure that everyone is a registered voter because we think that it is fundamental that uh, we are able to turn supporters into voters. So that is what we've been uh, on with and I think that the song reached the different parts of the country. That's why every Zimbabwean because of the quality of life, because of the living conditions, because of the expectation of Zimbabweans that we can live surely a better life where we are not given chicken in or nandos on the day of a rally, but we need to live a life better than the dogs of the rich. The fundamental national question right now in Zimbabwe is about equity and accountability. Zimbabweans want to have a government that will not give them more entertainment in a political rally or give them food or give them vices. What people want is better life. People want better education. People want electricity. People want water in the tap. People want to live a, life, a better life. That is the fundamental question because for us, rallies come and go. We can be in a political activity, spend more money. And to us and to help my brother to understand that those who have questioned the buzzing of people in rallies are not just looking at the buses moving. It's about the ideological disposition of a political organization because what is needed in this country 
is changing the quality of ordinary people, and that's what is expected, so that people have a free choice. People must be able to afford to go to either their rally or their rally or their rally or in our rally mm. freely without them being motivated by trickings and trappings of dictatorship. For I, this, this accusation of chicken in Nando's, uh, people coming to get t shirts, uh, people being bust to make up the numbers, really just attending your rallies for those freebies. And of course, you heard what Ostalo said there about, uh, about the, his translation of his numbers, the triple C numbers into votes. Any, any comment or response? My first point is this. Easy is the person who sits in the critic's chair. By virtue of that, I can refer to these ones uh, that are a few months old. But to people like my brother here, they are no longer in a position to be critics because they have been voted into certain positions themselves. And they have been voted in those positions to deliver, be it council, MP, or, or, or members of parliament. They cannot talk of zanu of delivering when they've never had a story of what they've delivered, where they've been voted in. Anyway, to go back to the point, as a party, we have a right to give our people food at our gatherings. It is our right. That's number one. Number two, zanu is not voted by those trinkets. If people need to know why we are winning by more than 80% on the 23rd of August, they should ask. So let me give, you, give it to you in short. We have expanded agriculture. We have impacted from woods on more than 2 million households. Our gold production <coughs> has been rising year on year. In terms of agricultural land, we have expanded since 2018 by more than 40,000 hectares. We have been building dams, increasing irrigable land. You look at tobacco, this year we've broken records. Gold, we are breaking records. Uh, you look at uh, lithium, lithium, we're opening it up. You look, we've got the Manize factory. Manufacturing has been rising. Every sector of the economy has been rising. That is what gets ZANU-PF voted back into power. If someone thinks it is because of chicken in, they are insulting the very voter that they want to vote for them. People sacrificed for nothing so that this country could be independent. When we gather, it is within our culture some, to gather. For right, Food for right. is not... Some, when we gather... Some would say that ZANU-PF is picking its success stories. However, you look at the economy, people are saying that they're worse off than five years ago. So if you look at the econ economic... If you, reason, let me would tell you, you... Would you, would when you say that that when is a speak of, When we speak of these uh, uh, changes, we know that people will be expecting uh, to give us uh, uh, a debate on that. We are talking of figures provided by the World Bank. We are not saying the economy is perfect, but we are saying we are in the tunnel, but the light is there at the end of the tunnel. Mm. People who look with an objective eye can see that there's a difference today from the time when the president came into power. Remind, uh, remember this, all these things that we've achieved, Gwai on 20% in 2018 and 80% now. We had one and a half years lost to COVID of zero production. We had funds that had to go towards solving the COVID pandemic. And our, uh, let me allow uh, the panel here to be reminded that we have got one of the best COVID response stories according to the World Health Organization. But, but, but would you agree that the economy has been a thorn in the side in terms of governance of the country, in terms of the, the, the living this, the, the, of, economy, of the economy has been a challenge. That is why we speak of the economy. We are not saying the economy is perfect, but we are saying what is important mm. is the building blocks yeah, yeah, for yeah, the yeah, economy. Yeah. Are they are clearly right, there to be let's seen. Let's get some comments. Your yeah. now yeah. coming yeah. to you, if you yeah. don't mind. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me start with you, sir. Yeah, very uh, quickly, I'll come thank, to you. Thank, thank you, Andy. Uh, let me start by imposing very a question to my, to, to, to my, to my brother. Uh, as they have taken over, right, mm. they've shaved, they have shaved mm. their head in 2018 and say we are new because I've shaved my head, I've got no hair, now my head becomes new. They have inherited uh, a system that was there. And right now, I can tell you, pensioners, if you go to every bank in the morning, they are still struggling to access their pension. And I'm telling you, that pension is no longer even able, they can't even buy a loff of bread with the pension that they're accessing right. from the bank. Maybe the cash that they're getting from the bank is not even enough for them to buy, to, to, okay, for a, for a combi to come to mm -hmm. town. So they are there to access their pension simply to try to live. Mm -hmm. So you're, so you're, so you're so insisting that I'm the, insisting the economy is stagnant. The economy is stagnant. Right. There is I, nothing I just really because that I do want to bring in the very quickly. It's a perpetuation of the old. Very quickly, if you may. With greatest respect to my brother there, and I think that maybe some of their people in the rank and file of Zan PF, like Mtuli Ngobe, have done disservice to them, particularly on the economic side, because what they've done to them, they've given them numbers, right? What is called economic, ruthless economic growth? 
where you have got numbers, you have got figures to show any growth, you have got construction, you have got building, but it has not changed the quality of life for ordinary people. That is what any society needs, the change of quality of life. And I, and I want to help him so that there's a better understanding mm -hmm. of what's happening in the economy. Right now, at the present moment, if you look at the inflation rate, if you look at the standards of living, if you look at salary lotion, savings account, the challenges that Zimbabweans are facing vis-a-vis -vis the projects that they are giving, what is happening right now, and, and let me debunk why there are these construction projects, because the biggest crisis in this country is corruption. He talks about lithium, he talks about gold, he talks about building of one, all those are tenders. There are tenders being done so that certain people, because the biggest crisis in the country right now mm. is about equity. Resources are concentrated on a minority few, whereas the majority of people are suffering. Because while this we have discussed about lithium, while this we are exporting lithium, diamond and gold, it has not changed the salaries of civil servants. It has not changed the quality of life for ordinary people. It mm. has not changed how me and you are relating vis-a-vis -vis the economy. So resources are benefiting a fewer minority citizens who are siphoning the resources, construct one or two projects right. for the purpose of parroting them, whereas ordinary people, in reality, everyone is suffering. All right. I, I do want to bring you in, but I, I just have to quickly, very brief comment you, on that. But you. very briefly, please, and I do bring you in. I do apologize. I will, I will bring you in. Very quickly. Our progress uh, and our plan on the economy has been very clear mm. from 2018. From the president's inauguration speech, we have got NDS 1, NDS 2, and we've got a program, uh, economic program stretching up to 2030. The president has been clear that we eat what we kill. We are not going to be taking loans to give people uh, salaries because we'll be mortgaging tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow by feeding today mm. and uh, for for them to say that we've been uh, flashing a few a few projects I don't know what a few means to them and uh, my brother here cannot talk of corruption when they are the ones who've been running the Rare City Council into the ground they should be ashamed of themselves to even find themselves speaking right. of corruption I'd, I'd, I'd like to but what on. I need yeah. you, what I need people to, can, what please. I need people to look at mm. is to look at the private investment that has been going up in the country anywhere you go New filling stations are coming up. Malls are being built. Private individuals are constructing and investing in business. Mm. We find that there is FDI coming into Zimbabwe. I have to that is an up, economy right. that is rising. Yeah. We are not saying that the economy is okay, perfect. Okay, all right. We know we can obviously debate the economy, we're perfect, debate but the we're economy and that's, yeah. that's a whole show on its own. Yeah. But good night. I want, I, want to, I want to come to you, please. You are on record. You said that you are the best option of all the other contestants. You point to your integrity and your background, of course, as a clergyman. Is this one of the central planks of your campaign? I mean, what exactly are you offering voters outside of your stellar character? Why should anyone vote for you or even some of your, your candidates if you, if you have some? People, people should vote for me because I am giving my services to the nation. I have, I have realized that there's a serious situation of kind of falsehood that's going on. For example, Triple C runs the, uh, the city council, but there are holes all over the streets uh, and so on. That, that's a government that is that, that, that's an, a, a structure that is supposed to fix the country. They are not doing that. ZANU PF says they are building roads, highways from Bight Bridge to 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 Karoya to um, what is it up there? Chirundu, in, in, to Chirundu, yeah, 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 yeah. But but the roads that we travel on are hurting our cars every day. So something is missing. It, me, I, I, my commitment is is just that integrity element. That element is missing in the leadership that we have. Mm -hmm. People say things and don't do it. People promise people and don't deliver what they promise. I'm different from that because I'm going to deliver what I promise. Well, Stalos, Triple C recently published your manifesto, and it was met with, I can call it, public and heavy criticism. One major accusation made was that the majority of your manifesto was plagiarized, and that Triple C simply reproduced policies made already by Zanu PF and possibly the MDCT. They say that some of the projects mentioned that you talk about in your manifesto have already been implemented and finished. How do you respond to this accusation of plagiarism? Look, it's an argument by people who are intellectually dishonest who want to be intellectual with the truth and trying to apply academic rules to a political party manifesto. Because when you subject a political party document into a plagiarism scan, which basically looks as uh, 
bibliography or when you've quoted citizens, mm -hmm. almost 90% or, or more than 90% of the document because we don't put bibliography in a manifesto. And when you subject it to an academic scan, it will tell you that citizens was used by another uh, documentary or by another scholar and so forth. What must be debated is the substance of the document. We articulate in our new Zimbabwe blueprint that in the first 100 days, we want to come up with a clear microeconomic stability framework. One of it is obviously a monetary policy agenda, which is about removal of the bonus and use of the US dollar in the interim, while we resolve our domestic currency issues. We articulate my brother in the same document that one of the first major things we need to do when we get into government is to have an education reform, including the removal of the color system, funding of free primary education, and making sure that uh, that social and basic right is provided to people at primary level. We talk about health care, which is aligning with the, the Abuja declaration that says 13% of the annual budget must go to health. He talks about an agenda about eating what we kill, which is basically economic G-racism. And we articulate it very clearly to say, look, what must happen right now in this country is the restoration of confidence in the banking sector. People don't trust uh, the banking sector. People don't want to bank. And there's need to restore social contract. And you cannot use the bond notice, the current currency of exchange in that particular... But you also want to dollarize as well. I mean, from your we have said correct? in the interim, let's bring uh, the US dollar and the basket of multiple mm, currencies. Mm. While it's in the long term, we work oh. with our broader macroeconomic uh, framework. So that is part of our agenda. We also articulate issue around bringing a uh, tie to this to resettled farmers mm. and domestic dwellers who have had right. problems of let, habitation. Let, let, I'm sorry, I have to jump in there because we are running out of time. And I, so I will have to ask you to be brief and answer the questions we can and straight to the point, for I do you believe Zanupi, does Zanupi believe that uh, Triple C plagiarized most of your ideas and put some of the ideas that you have promised um, in terms of their manifesto? What, what is Zanupi's views? Well, there has been uh, a lot of uh, uh, proof on the net and everywhere that uh, some serious plagiarism happened, but that is not where the crux of the matter is with us as Zanupi. You know, the ignorance behind the writers of the manifesto is remarkable. You find within that manifesto there is promises to build Wanga Unit 7 and 8. You know, something, that which, were, something which was commissioned by the president, uh, President Idim Nangago, already. You know, this is a manifesto written by people who are out of touch with uh, what is happening in the country. And essentially the manifesto is, uh, is an endorsement Mm. Because it is promising what ZANU PF under the right. leadership of President Mnangagwa is already doing. Okay, I, I, that I is what I can say on, on their you manifesto. You can comment when I come back okay. to you, uh, no. Ostalos. Don't worry, you can comment on that as well. Uh, Gary Kai, uh, let's look at your UANC. Um, you don't seem to have enough candidates at parliamentary or local. You, say, you, you sorry, you said sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm talking. I'm jumping to you. I my apologize. I, I came the wrong way. Looking at your party, UANC, not enough candidates uh, at parliamentary yeah. and uh, local authority level to govern effectively. It possibly seems that if you do win the presidency, you'd have to form a coalition government and possibly implement policies that may not be your fundamental policies because you'd have to you'd have to compromise if you formed a coalition government. Before, what, what would be your comment to this? Before I answer that, I might say that uh, there is a plagiarism in this uh, country because first of all, I mean, just two days ago, I heard the, the leader of uh, Triple C say free education for the first time. Free education that is coming from uh, from us, and I, I also heard. Um, Zanu PF talking of uh, title deeds, that's coming from us. Where have you been these 45, 43 years? People need title deeds because title deeds is how people make money. Mm. That's wealth. Mm. And you did not do this for 43 years. Now we are talking about it in Epworth. And I'm glad to say that uh, His Excellency President Munangago actually said that uh, uh, that title deeds idea is uh, Muzorewa's homes in, uh, in, in Glenview. That is where it started. He acknowledges that. There's nothing wrong in copying from the mother. We are the mother party. There's nothing wrong with that. Just copy good things, implement them. Now, to come back to you, you said that if I'm just the president... Wait, when did the president say this? I, 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 oh, I must have missed that. Uh, is it a year ago? But he mentioned that in, uh, in Epworth. He, he mentioned people. that it was, it was your party that came up with the idea of title deeds. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he said, okay. no, no, Moose Ross houses in, uh, in Glenview okay. have title of deeds right. or can get okay. a title right, of deeds. Let's, let's talk about this issue of forming a coalition. Oh, government. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, can you effectively govern with a coalition government where you're going to have to negotiate, coalition. you're going to have to come up with <clears> policies <throat> that, may, that may not suit your core no, beliefs? The, the reason that uh, I, I, I know that I'm, as a president, I can run the country even though I don't have enough uh, MPs is, is that um, I believe that to be president is to be leader not to be a commander or anything mm. like that. Mm. So I actually, I open my, my arms to people of other parties. Like, but, I mean, uh, but you'll be a standalone person. You know, no, how many no, MPs will you have? How many, stand, how many uh, parliamentarians? I mean, it's not stand alone because when I go to parliament, for example, I've, our party has an idea, for example, to uh, mm. uh, say to, 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 to institute a, uh, um, free medicine, right? For example, I don't see a member of parliament refusing that kind. Our party is going to bring policies that the people of Zimbabwe mm. want, or that's going to be helpful to the people of Zimbabwe. Therefore, MPs who are there from different parties are going to naturally support so that. Do you believe that your government, if you do win the vote, can can survive in terms of the It will cross, survive cross, be, cross, be, uh, because, because I, I believe in inclusive government. Garika, are you in the same boat, Elizabeth Valeria? <laughs> do you think that you would have to deal with a coalition government if she won? And, and, the, and of course, that comes with its own issues. Maybe you could briefly explain. We do. We Running okay, thank time. you very much, Andy. But let me also get the opportunity to respond on what we offer Zimbabweans, uh, uh, like you have mm. asked other uh, uh, panelists here. As United Alliance, we are saying we are the best alternative. Why? Because our policy framework is, standard, is centered on accountability. We want a government that is accountable, is enshrined in the constitution of Zimbabwe. We want to make sure that the, our, our economic framework is centered on <sighs> Uh, uh, stability is centered on advancement and is centered mm. on uh, the dignity of the of our people. I, I can tell you that our dignity has been bruised, it has been battered, and uh, every time, everywhere you are going, mm. uh, we need to correct that uh, so that the people of Zimbabwe have got that dignity. And when I'm talking of uh, advancement, I'm talking about a situation whereby our local government, uh, it, has, it has come short, even the, the government has come short in terms mm. of uh, service deliveries that and we want to offer better safe delivery from right. our hospital. I, I have to, to jump in. I will ask my transport. guest. I have asked my guest. We do only have around seven minutes left, so I'll ask you to give, maybe give one minute <laughs> to answer. <laughs> Ostalas, I want to talk to you. There's been serious complaints. Two issues I want to talk about, triply, particularly from your party, Triple C. One, of course, is the printing of ballot papers. And the second, of course, is possible access to the voters' role, particularly in the format that the complaints are the format given to candidates was not in the correct format. Now, unfortunately, you do have a minute because we're running out of time. What is Triple C's views? Position. Our views is very clear. Let's follow the electoral law and the constitution to its Latin spirit. Um, the voters' roll must be provided. By now, we should have had an audited voters' roll, verifiable voters' roll, and the voters' that is accessed by all political players. That's what the law says. We have been to the High Court, of course, on the issue, and the High Court's decision was that Zek must be able to provide. Zek has made the commitment to do so by the 19th uh, of this month, oh. uh, to give it particular to us as applicants. So oh. we think that it is an important issue if, uh, to have... Uh, and the printing know, of ballot papers, you seem to imply that the printing of ballot papers may lead to rigging if it's not supervised or you need to be there. This is, this is what your is triple C is saying. Ballot paper is at the right. center of electoral manipulation in this country. Okay. That's why we say there are three things that must be resolved on the ballot where the ballot is being printed, how many ballots are being printed with their serial numbers, how it is going to be transported and its storage. So, right, so right, let's talk about that. Let's talk, I mean, Zanu Pierre, of course, you're a contestant in the election. Mm -hmm. Do you have any issues as the party about printing of ballots, about getting access to the voters' roll? Have you also seen any, mm -hmm. have, you, have you personally, as Zanu Pierre, complained about some of these issues as well? Or what, what is your position? We believe that Zek is uh, doing uh, a proper job. We don't have any complaints with, uh, with Zek. And I believe if anyone should have a problem with Zek, uh, they should approach the courts. Right, so you're okay with the ballot? We, are, we don't have okay any complaints right. yet. Uh, once we do, we'll go to the courts right. if we ever have. Can I have your views, please, very quickly on the ballot papers and on voters? Well? Zek has not served the nation well. That's my comment. They do s certain things that you can see that, that, that they are warp. The, Zek needs to be reconstituted. Right now, it is, it is biased, and uh, what decisions they mm. make are unclear to us. Okay. Uh, I can tell you that in this, this 21st century, we have a ballot paper in black and white. Come on. Uh, what does that imply? Definitely when one sees that, it is skewed. And uh, 
according to the constitution, once again, there is supposed to be an alphabetical order of the candidates on the ballot paper, but this is uh, printed in a certain way that favors certain candidates. That alone, I think, is, is tending uh, Zek as a, as a referee. Okay. It becomes a player. Right, we are coming to the end, so I will give each of you one final opportunity to speak directly to voters. As I said, you have core voters that you will probably vote for you come hell or high water. Then, of course, you have undecided voters who you are trying to convince in six days to go to the polls and vote for you, and that could be the difference between winning and losing. Let me start with you, um, uh, Gunyai. Let's talk about the 23rd of August. We're in the final lap, so to speak. Why should anyone, especially undecided voters, vote for you? Vote for any of your candidates that you're putting up. And further, I'd like you each to do this, please, to publicly here and now reiterate your party's emphasis on no to violence before, during, and after the poll. You have literally about one we, seconds. We signed a thing that says we, this, we desire peaceful elections this year. We signed that agreement. I hope it's going to be implemented, but that is in writing. Now, about voting for Muzorewa, the thing of it is that they, we have been voting for parties that have not delivered for 20 years, for 43 years. Now is time to vote for a party that delivers. It's on record as one that it delivers. Please give us a chance. This is it. Gerika, you have 30 seconds. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I can safely say, Zimbabwe, uh, it's exactly six days away from another five years, and you need to invest your vote wisely. It will take you another five years to redeem it. And I can safely say, United Zimbabwe Alliance is the opportunity to give you a good life, a deserving life, and we are going to implement new policies that benefit Zimbabwe, not a few connected individuals. Right. Fry, final word. Um, I would like to encourage Zimbabwe to vote for the only people that have been giving tangible results, the only people with uh, work that can be measured, that can be seen, the only mm. party led by President Idim Nangago, which has been delivering and delivering for the past five years. And on the matter of peace, the president has been very clear. So I will reiterate the words of my president that let's say no to violence, let us have more peace, and let us have more togetherness. Our diversity does not separate us. It is what binds us. Ostalos, final words. Thank you very much. We make our mission to a peaceful election and we expect to Zimbabweans to conduct themselves peacefully, not only in the boardrooms and in front of newsrooms and cameras, but on the ground so that we have a stable country. Uh, my message, of course, to ZANPF supporters is that uh, they've used you for 43 years. They've continued to give themselves uh, SUVs, give school fees to their children out of the country and give you nothing in this country besides uh, chicken in. This is an opportunity for you to redeem yourself from 43 years of failure, mendacity, kleptocracy and nihilism. It's an opportunity to vote for change for change of quality of life for yourselves, not for another political party, but for the betterment of every Zimbabwe and the future of our children. Well, we have come to the end of the chase this evening. Zimbabwe's premier current affairs program. Our topic, August the 23rd, the final lap. I'd like to thank my guests, Farai Marapira, Zani PF, Acting Director of Information, Gift Ostalos, Siziba, Triple C Deputy Spokesperson, Gunyai Muzarewa, UANC Presidential Candidate, and Gary Kamalambo, UZA National Chairperson. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the chase. So and all I can say is I wish you well. Six days' time yeah. it is. So make sure to tune in every week, of course, the chase, 9 p.m. Central African time, right here on ZTM Prime. Of course, our election coverage will continue next week. We'll be in the election center. We'll bring you all the news as it happens right here at ZTM Prime as we continue our election series. Well, I'm Andy Hodges. Goodbye, good night, and please, you all be safe. Gentlemen. Thank you so much. Stand up, guys. It's fine. Yeah, that was very good. Yes, I, I...